Today at the Yukai Hall, a very successful community meeting was held with regards to development application DA21-0010. The Mayor of the Tweed Shire Council, Mayor Chris Cherry and pr former Mayor Katie Milne were present and it was wonderful to see all the speakers that um, got up and articulated uh, just one little area of a very complex development application. And it is not one of these things that you can pick up, it's not like reading that, you know, you can get to the end of it even within weeks of pouring through these documents and find everything that is in there. But um, I just wanted to tell people that if you did miss out and you wanted to catch up with what actually went on, the Northern Rivers Guardians hosted the live feed for uh, the first hour and a quarter. And you can go and view this directly on their website, um, Facebook page, sorry, and I'll leave a link for that. Um, it is not the best acoustics in the Yukai Hall and you may have a little bit of difficulty understanding some people but other people are very clear and very well articulated and I, overall it was a very successful event. The hall was filled to capacity, they couldn't put any more people in because of COVID restrictions but a very successful event and also too that if you haven't signed up uh, to receive a, an email newsletter from the Northern Rivers Guardians to actually do that as well because when important community events do come up they are going to be at the forefront of knowing about these things so if you're signed up for the newsletter, you can keep an eye on current events. And that way it is not so difficult to actually get people informed when something like this does happen. And things do happen. That's life. Mayor Chris Cherry got up and spoke first and she explained how um, the process worked with council, how it had ended up in the Northern Regional Planning Panel and also the matter of the civil construction costs was actually raised and it was clarified by the Mayor that a letter has been sent to the applicant asking them to submit a revised costing one which accurately reflects the civil construction's cost and not the passed on uh, builders' costs. And the, mo the Mayor also said that even after submissions have closed, if there are any issues that you want to bring to their attention, that to please contact them that ultimately in this scenario it is a matter of working together with what works for everybody and other than well a couple of people if you watch the video they did show up and put forward their best foot forward to try and argue for the development but it was actually clearly stated at the beginning of the meeting that it is not an unbiased meeting. It was there to, the, the whole purpose of being there was to actually discuss all the concerns. And there are many concerns. Some are just what you would expect and then others go way beyond that. And that's something that I'm actually going to bring up is the character and the ongoing activity of NCV Enterprises and the members of Nightcap on Minjimbal. Because whereas the council can only accept uh, valid legal um, arguments against the development application, 
we can certainly explore the character of the developers and the consistency of that character. And one of those consistency is the constant attempt of censorship. They are always trying to close people down, shut them up, sue them. Now, early this morning, I had to re-upload two of my most recent videos to do with this development application because that makes seven videos now that have been removed from my channel because they claim there's a defamation case. There is no defamation case. It is not even part of a defamation case. So every time they've made one of those claims to YouTube, which is a standard thing that gets the bot to just remove my video. So I just upload it again anyway. But it's interesting which videos they've actually done that on. Seven videos. And I'm just going to show you which ones they are. Now you see, because this kind of censorship is ongoing, I do check to make sure that all my videos are still visible on the video page. And if I can't see them on the one that isn't my upload channel, well, I link into it and the next thing, well, look, hang on, I'll show you. So if you have a look over on the right hand side, the one that's actually missing is the Tweed Council's proposal to remove rural land sharing communities and a more detailed look at the issues with Nightcaps DA 21-0010. So if I copy and let's take that link, stick it over here and have a look. This is what I get because they've made a stock standard claim that they just bang this on. This content is not available on this country domain due to a defamation complaint. Now you remember when that was actually done when AB's, I put AB's Vox up? It's only AB. And it's not defamation if it's out of your own mouth. Seriously. But this is the way they do it. This is the seventh time. But interesting that they've got that one removed, isn't it? About the removal, and plus I did do a very detailed look at certain aspects at, of Nightcap on Minjimble, and clearly they didn't like it. So this little man here, Billy Fitzgerald's, um, Billy Fitzgerald, is the person that works for Rose Litigation, and Derek Zillman, that he's sort of like the, the master puppeteer over them, would have instructed Billy Fitzgerald, you know, put in that standard thing on that video, report it, make a complaint, get it pulled down. Now, this has happened on this one with Billy in it as well, who is NCV Enterprises, was also removed. So they've been quite busy over the last month or even a couple of weeks I mean since two weeks ago this uh, they've removed this one Tweed Council's proposal to remove the RLSCs and a more detailed look answer to Billy Fitzgerald of R Rose Litigation cease and desist on NCV Enterprises who is NCV Enterprise who is Billy Fitzgerald acting for and the other one they didn't like is when I talked about fudging capital expenditure and other misrepresentations in DA 21-0010. They got that one removed as well. And I can show you, it'll just come up the same thing, just in case you want to check and verify. This is what will come up when I'm not logged on to my own channel. This is what you'll get if you try and see this. So within the last couple of weeks, they have had many of my videos removed because they do not want the public to actually have any questions asked about them or even answered. 
because this fudging of capital expenditure one, all I'm doing is pointing out what they quoted somewhere in the DA to say that, well, you can't include that in the costs that you've got on that one page. And so it's now been removed because of a defamation complaint. Hmm. So these are things that are kind of vulnerable spots for them. They don't want you to be looking at the figures. Well, this is kind of a classic trait of the developers. You know, look over there, don't watch what I'm doing. It's a, it's a distract game. And as the previous video that I uploaded not so long ago, Smoke and Mirrors, it's a game they play. And one that I have never seen people sink so low to actually use culture and heritage and the vulnerabilities of the tribes of people to their own profit and gain. Because none of the tribes are going to get what they're promised. As far as what I can see, there are limited tribe members. There's Dean Rodimer, Mark Cora, they adopted um, Adrian Brannock and Richard Mote. Who's the rest of the tribe? Who is profiting from all of this? What tribe is profiting from all of this? And if you ask Mark McMurtry, he'll tell you it's none of your business who the tribe is. Well, I think it is. Who is this mythical tribe that you're talking about? Is it actually made up of people other than Dean Rodimer and Mark Cora and a perhaps a few other of your OSTF groupie extremists that you can get to come and stir up trouble around anything. You know, you've been doing this for years. All you are is an agitator, Mark McMurtry. You are an agitator inside the tribes, pretending to actually give them something when all you're doing is agitating and causing division from within. And see this little smirk up here? Think about that smirk. When he said that none of the sacred sites will be touched, they will be protected. Yet it is very clear that the development is going to be over the top of the most sacred of the sites. And he doesn't care. The developers don't care. Why would they protect that burial site, those burial grounds, when they can flog it off for 300 odd thousand to someone to come in and stick a house on and do whatever they want with and give them exclusive use and right over that land where that sacred site is. That's not protecting it. Everything about, Mac, um, well, Max Egan, yeah, but Mark McMurtry, they're both fakes. They're both pretending to be something that they are not. And one thing of very um, notice, very much noticeable, is that since the beginning of the year, Mark McMurtry has not been using, using his stolen fake name. He has only been publicly commenting anywhere I can see under his name of Mark McMurtry. So whoever in the tribes has actually been getting him to stop misrepresenting, good on you. But the fight is not done yet. He is still pulling the tribes apart from within. Misappropriating all the culture, the heritage, disrespecting every single part about Aboriginal cultures in Australia. And it's just unacceptable that anyone that could even consider to say, oh, I'm blood, I'm connected to country and I come from this, that or whatever tribe, that if you can actually say that and support this fake, don't want to hear from you. You're not worth listening to because you're clearly as full of shit 
as what he is. At the meeting today, a lovely woman came up. She was very short and very sweet. I missed her name, but she said, do you want them to destroy Aboriginal sites? And people said no. And she said, well, they're going to. So, and that was it. She walked off after she'd said that. Because that was just the pure and simple point. They are not protecting Aboriginal heritage or culture at Nightcap on Minjimbal. It's a development to profit and make money for the developers. For little smarmy little people like this Mark McMurtry and his, yeah, Adrian Brannock's in the background there. And the one that's silent in the background, Derek Zillman. Yes, he's the one that they send all their little emails to and say, oh, look, here's another one. And he goes to Billy and Billy, little Billy goat down here, sends you a letter and threatens that because they sued Gillian Norman that you're breaching or you could be breaching. It's like, mate, you're a little toad. You cannot turn around and threaten, like if it was a judgment against me, yeah, you can say I've breached it, but it's not. And you cannot take a judgment off anybody else and put it onto them and say it applies to them. Or you could be breaching what was a judgment against them. There is no judgment against me. And you really don't want to try and get one, do you? finally got the point didn't they have I shared that with you no I don't think I have but I might now so if you go to the original sovereign tribal federation public group you can quite often find posts that Mark McMurtry has commented on and usually anything associated with certain people you're going to be guaranteed that Mark McMurtry is going to have his say so Christian Crown and Mark McMurtry kind of love to hate each other and they're always back and forth. And I'd noticed this new name in here, Kerry Ann Cayley or whatever. And I thought, oh, that's interesting, but didn't think much of it. And on the, um, well, was it the 2nd or 3rd of March, Mark McMurtry on his profile posted a comment or a picture and then made a smart comment referring to us Crown Stooges and I'm included apparently um, that he'd changed my name to Kerry Ann Cashel and I thought well that's interesting why has he changed that so anyway it's taken me a bit and a few more comments to figure out until I get to the bottom of one sorry I'm going to try and not laugh Okay, so this is another post that was done on the 17th of February. The one I was just look at showing you was on the 27th of February, and I'll come back to that one. But the, it had been days nobody had commented on this. And then randomly, Mark McMurtry comes along and makes comments. And to Kerry Ann Cayley, he goes, Kerry Cashel, you are a dropkick. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. I try. When it comes to you, I really do try. I hope I get under your skin. And that's your fake skin or your real skin. Ah, whatever works, as long as I get under your skin. <laughs> but listen here, mate. Look, I couldn't even figure out because even you could not go, oh, she's her. But then yeah, my little hand went over the little icon and it came up with as it does. Oh, so University of Tasmania. So projection, Kerry Ann Cayley must be Kerry Cashel. So he had to come along and reply to Kerry Ann's comment and say, Kerry Cashel, you're a dropkick. As if to say, guess what? I've figured out it's you. <laughs> you stupid little man. That is not me. But go ahead, because I'm sure that Kerry Ann's been doing a good job, because otherwise you wouldn't have left a comment. Because, yeah, she reckons you talk like a dead roo. Yeah, off. 
rotten smell. So now here we are back to the 27th. This is 10 days after he's he's gone back and figured out that he's only left in the last 24 hours. Oh, look, I figured out that Kerri-Ann Cayley must be Kerri-Ann Cashel or Kerry Cashel, sorry. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. So anyway, let's go to Samuel McMurtry. Hey, you little rug rat. Don't know whether you look better as a crackhead or a rug rat, but they pretty much both suit you. Because I read the comment and I cracked up laughing. Because the part that got me is where, oh, poor Sammy. He actually thinks that Alex Jones has got intellect. Wow, man. You are so, so screwed up. So what Samuel McMurtry says is, the nut job crystalline geometry thinks of herself as an Alex Jones. <laughs> All the absurdity without any of the intellect. Sadly, that description seems to be common, the common denominator in this group. I don't know which group he's talking about. Is he talking about the OSTF group? I like the part where he said his dad's been a failure his whole life and he could have achieved more if it wasn't for other people. <laughs> what, they didn't give you enough money to achieve it with? Oh, poor boy, Sammy. But anyway, so David Rourke, yeah, David Rourke is always in there too. David Rourke has got um, a lot of uh, good arguments that he brings forward. If her claims and evidence were wrong, surely you would specifically address them and sue her for damages rather than use a personal attack as your only weapon. So then we get down here to um, Sammy's response. David, why would you assume that? Some have better ways to spend their time than suing idiots like her for ranting. And for what? My understanding is she hasn't got fuck all to pay if a case was made. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to laugh at that because as soon as I read that and the lose, lose, it's like, good, you got the message. Because you see, the thing is that taking me to court is going to cost some money and there's absolutely no guarantees they're going to win. Because I've got quite a few videos now. <laughs> and thanks to the DA that they lodged, I've actually got a lot more evidence too of how the promises that they made certainly aren't even fulfilled in the development application. So you have to understand by now, Mark McMurtry is always used to blustering around and ha, ha, I can get the better of you, we're going to sue you. And they have. They've really gone overboard to harass people through the legal system. And then they got to a point where they realised, well, <laughs> you remember when he said that each of my videos was worth 200000 and that, that made me laugh because it was like, yeah, okay. Look, you might as well make it $2 million a video. Hey, go for whatever you want because whatever you try for, guess what you're going to get? zero and they figured that one out I'm a lose-lose so the best they can do is just continue to censor me and say that it's it's a defamation claim well really I should actually have a defamation claim against them because ultimately what they're putting into YouTube is not true I have nothing to do with Gillian Norman and her defamation case. Nothing to do with me. So to censor me on the basis of somebody else's judgment is not legal. And the problem, Billy Fitzgerald knows that is not legal. He knows that he cannot threaten other people with other people's crimes and actions and judgments. That's not the way it works. We are responsible for our own deeds and actions not others and the fact that Billy Fitzgerald has constantly abused that unethically 
will actually become a matter for, well, for his own profession to review his conduct. But we do have more pressing issues with the development application right now, and they're certainly busy deleting all my videos. What else can they do? So they will continue to censor my videos, those ones that they don't want the public to hear about. They don't want the public to hear about all the questions that have been raised. The public comment period hasn't even closed on this development application and they are already attempting to silence the questions. Well, continue. They have been doing this for years. As was well pointed out in the meeting today, there are so many things that they keep secret that you're not allowed to know. That, like, knowing somehow will be breaking some secret rule or act. It's not. This is supposed to be upfront and honest. Already, their capital expenditure, their civil constructions cost, has been padded out with what can only be seen as a clear attempt to avoid the Tweedshire Council being the authorising and consenting body. And that is very obvious to everybody. And you can say that, well, that, that may be their intent, that may not be, you can't prove it. But when people make up their own minds about this development, they don't need to have it proved in a court of law. They can actually make up their own minds. Because unfortunately, the thing about the law and law courts is that it's only ever what you can prove. And we all know that half of what happens to you, you can't prove. Could you even prove what you had for breakfast this morning? Of course not. Who goes round recording? Well, I suppose there are poor souls on you on Facebook and stuff like that. But yeah, generally speaking, normal people don't do that, do they? And they don't have a, a record of everything to protect themselves in case someone would come against them. You know, it's... They don't record all the activities of their life. It's not like they're going around with a camera crew. So most of the reality of people's lives cannot be proven in any way, shape or form or in a court of law. And we know that. So we don't need a court of law to prove anything to us because we deal with the reality. The reality and the consideration of the legality as well but the reality of situations where people have been confronted with threats from people constantly over the years that cannot prove that it's been done to them. And the reason that it keeps getting done and the way that it's done, of course it's going to be done where it can't be proven that, oh, look, I didn't go and threaten them. Where's your video evidence? Where's your photographs? Where's anything to prove that I even did that? That's a lie. If you look at this thing, you'll see that I'm a really uprighteous tribal person with an adopted fake name. Why would I ever lie? It is the height of insult to the tribal cultures in Australia. What they are doing is a gross cultural misappropriation. It is one of the worst cases I've ever seen. And when I saw Dean Rodimer get up in that meeting and say, this is helping the tribes and, you know, it's all about time that we got something, blah, blah, blah. It's not all about the tribes. Do you know that Dean Rodimer and Mark Cora are the only two signatories that represent the tribe? Nobody else has got any control over anything to do with Nightcap on Minjimble. They have not declared who the rest of the tribe are. What tribe? You can say we've got a tribe, but 
is your tribe patched together with people from all different tribes and all different walks of life? You know, are they OSTF supporters? Or are they Minimal tribe? Or is it the Widjibal? Because it is Widjibal land if you talk to them. Or is it the Bunjalung? I mean, which tribe are you talking about that is actually going to profit from this? And you can't say all the tribes. And when you talk about the homeless, why are you so prejudiced against all homeless? Do you think that there are not people out there of all races, colour and creed that are homeless? This exclusivity that is being created around this false narrative that there's actually going to be a benefit for this tribe, whatever tribe it is, it is certainly not a legitimate, valid tribe. Of who? Of what members? Ask Mark McMurtry. He won't tell you. But if you buy in to NICAP on Minjimble, you become part of the tribe. So with Dean Rodimer and Mark Cora as the tribe that can adopt you in, people from all walks of life and everything can come in and you're adopted into the tribe and now you're part of the tribe. But who are you? You've got no blood connection to the land. You can get adopted into the, a tribe, but that means nothing. It's the connection to the land that counts. And these people, well, Mark McMurtry doesn't have the blood connection to the land. He certainly has got no right to stand up and even mouth the words of what was done to us when the white man came here. That is just the height of insult for him to project that it was done to his ancestors. His ancestors could have been the one on the bloody boat coming over and sticking their toe in the sand and doing the conquering. He's just turning everything into a joke. And he's ridiculing and diminishing the tribal cultures of Australia. If you want to continue to support Mark McMurtry, well, all I can say is that people around you that don't agree with you should actually seriously consider whether this person actually needs to be assessed for their mental health condition. Because if you do not have the capacity to actually see the fake that Mark McMurtry is, there is really something mentally wrong with you. So anyone in the community, in the area, any encounters you have with Mark McMurtry or any other members of Nightcap on Minjimble, you are asked to report them to police immediately. Do not sit back and think that their intimidation is going to last. You need to be a voice. You need to stand up. Or are you going to let these intimidators continue their con? And I can only see it as one big con because it's got, well, it's got more loopholes in it that, you know, it's like a bucket that's not going to hold water. You know that saying? So anybody that is having any problems with any members of Nightcap on Minjimble, which includes people like Dolph Cook and his Cannabis University and his activities up there, Mark McMurtry and his hooning around, giving the finger to people and having a child in the car unrestrained, report it to police. Any time, every time they do something, report it to police. When they have enough records of current activity to go with the historical data that they have already been provided with, there will be 
action. But they can only take action against them if you do your part. Any time they're doing something that is intimidating to you, report it to police. They come along and they break trees inside your fence boundary, report them to police. They do anything spiteful, threatening, intimidating, destroy property, report them to police. It's time to take back your community and the only way you can do that is by standing together and there, there is already a strong community standing together. You can stand with them or you can stand against them. But there's also an old saying too and I could come up with plenty here so maybe I won't even come out with one. But the force of the resistance against Nightcap on Minjimbal is far greater than it can withstand. The issues and the problems with Nightcap on Minjimbal are so great that they are not going to be able to overcome them. They still have to come up with millions and millions of dollars to buy out Peter Van Leishout's contract. For all those 16 lots, that's millions of dollars. That means that they need to bring in a lot of investors on their promises. And then what happens if it all falls through? It was said at the meeting today that 50 plus people have already invested. So what happens to those 50 plus people that have already invested when this one falls through? You will have one company to sue and you will have to try and prove that you actually have legal right in the land when that company owns the land. And it'll be NCV Enterprises this time, but last time it was Wollumbin Horizons. But Wollumbin Horizons was their beginnings. You know, it wasn't as big a devastation didn't I mean if if this is 50 plus investors that's 50 plus people that are going to lose money that are going to find themselves in a position of trying to prove their legal position that they actually handed money over for this development with the promise that they would have certain things now this actually might be proven a lot more easily now because they've uploaded the development application and there's now proof this was what was promised to people. Now the thing is that those 50 plus people that have bought in, you'd have to know that a large amount of your money has actually gone to people like Billy Fitzgerald here to pay for the cost to send people like me threatening letters, to take people like Gillian Norman to court and sue, sue, sue her and you know anybody else I mean, there are so many people out there that have actually received letters from Billy Fitzgerald. Shut up, you know, or we'll sue you. Over, like, there was a threat made to one person. She didn't even know who Gillian Norman was. So how could she even be held accountable for breaking a judgment that was made against this woman when she didn't even know who she was? It's absolutely ridiculous. The outlandish and unethical claims that are made in these letters of threat from Billy Fitzgerald. And they have to employ these techniques because, well, you know, I just keep seeing years ago in the comedy company when they used to, well, comedy company or whatever it was, where they used to do the Dodgy Brothers. And I used to laugh at that. But I just keep seeing that image in my head any time I look at them. It's like watching the Dodgy Brothers. Because if anyone remembers those um, skits, you know, that they were always so obviously dodgy. Is that, but that was kind of the funny thing about it is because they were obviously dodgy. But it's not funny in real life when people are so obviously dodgy. And there are other things too that I will bring out that, um, well actually Dolph Cook's wife, or apparently her wife, actually confirmed about their dodgy dealings. 
so but anyway that's for another video um, this one was well I suppose to um, explore a little bit of the characters behind the people that are this development they are not nice people they are not community people they are certainly not people that live up to their do no harm motto in fact they are the exact opposite and the thing that concerns me and why I did this video here which was it here what do they mean by 240 hectares of open space that's on top of the developable areas they're talking about open space where there's all this bush and natural bush and trees that is a contradiction of terms see in this picture here that road's a bit of an open space but these trees are not an open space this paddock here that's an open space that on the bridge might even be seen as an open space but I don't see bush as being open space and yet on the very well known map they've got it clearly identified that on top of the developable areas there's 240 hectares of open space and you look at those areas and you go but it's not open space there's trees there then you wonder ah so the timbers of the plantation aren't worth anything but you propose to take out all the natural timbers and make a shit ton of money that way it was interesting that Dean Rodimer brought that up today about the trees and how the government and the council would profit from them re them removing the trees I mean he wasn't making an argument nobody gives a shit about the money we care about the damage you're doing to the place and what you will take not only from the environment but the peace quiet enjoyment from hundreds and hundreds of other people thousands of people in the broader view of the area and the region and you will destroy precious valuable habitat and then you go around going do no harm oh I just want someone to make them choke on those words question everything there will still be time after the submissions close if there has been anything that you have noticed that should be brought to the council's attention it does not have to be part of a submission you can still bring it to the council's attention this was encouraged at the community meeting today by all means if you discover something yes please let us know so ultimately the cooperation of the council is there with the community so we all work together and we'll get the job done and uh, well let's just say I can see that um, we could be getting close to putting one nail in the coffin and then it's just a matter of banging in the rest isn't it <laughs> okay I'll talk to you next time Bye.